I just love that video. Hey, good morning and welcome to uh, Grace Church Online. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm so blessed that you're spending this time with us here in worship this morning. And hey, welcome to Memorial Day weekend. And I hope you have some great plans for the weekend, maybe barbecue or connect even virtually uh, with friends and family and share together in this day as we remember uh, those who paid the price for our freedom. And you know, one of the things that we do like to do here is to connect. And uh, that's one of the things I love about this church. We connect for a mission, uh, even during this pandemic, and we're providing food and, and other services to people in our community. Um, we're getting together for small groups and Bible study and, and youth group and all that. This is a great thing. And if you're new here to Grace, you know, check it out. This might be something you'd be interested in as well. In fact, you can find all this stuff on our website, gumc.org. And if you are new, I'd ask if you would please uh, fill out a connect card, a little digital connect card. You'll see the link right there in the comment section. That would really help us out a lot. And another way to connect after worship today uh, would be to join us for uh, a Zoom coffee fellowship after church. So grab your cup of joe and hang out in Zoom and, and make some new friends. And uh, listen, one favor you can do for me is to like 
and share this uh, worship service on your Facebook newsfeed. In fact, you can have a, a watch party as you do this. And this is a great way for you to, for you to invite people to church. Uh, you can just put it out there and people who want to join in will join in. But uh, as we get ready for worship today, let's take a second and we're going to virtually greet one another. And what I'm going to ask you to do is to type your name and where you're from in the comment section. And maybe you'll see friends that you've known for a long time, or maybe you'll meet a new friend who might live down the street from you. But take a moment and do that. And uh, as you're doing that, we'll put another link in the comment section for you. And this is for the bulletin and announcements for the week. And this uh, gives you an idea of all the goings on and happenings at the church that you can be a part of. All right. So you got that. You said hi and where you're from and you're greeting one another. All right. And let's take a moment then and bow our heads and pray as we get ready to begin our service time. And Lord God, we thank you for the gift of today. And it's a day with mixed feelings, Lord, as we come in this Memorial Day weekend and we remember those who have given their lives uh, for the freedoms that we enjoy. But it's also a day to celebrate and come together because we know that death is not the end of the story, but there's resurrection and eternal life through Jesus Christ. And so as we hear and sing the music and as we hear your word and, and the message today and see the videos and all that's gonna happen during this time together, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would just reach out and connect all of us no matter where we are and open our hearts and our minds to what you have to say to us this day so that we can grow and glorify you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, listen, let's prepare ourselves and, and get into a frame of mind to worship and to celebrate God. And you know, there, there are many songs that talk about death and life and, and what the meaning is of all these things, but how we live through all these in Christ. And so I'm going to invite you to join with us and, and sing with us, if you will, uh, for our opening worship set.
You know, there's a story about a guy named Joshua. From the Bible? Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. God told him to build a memorial out of stones. Yeah, and the stones were to be a reminder of this great thing that God had done. So we know it's not the same thing, but we were wondering if we could remember your dad with you. Remember all the great things he's done. Sure. So this one here, this one's for remembering a great friend. This is uh, for his part, keeping my kids safe at night. You got one? Not yet. Not yet, okay. Um, this one's for him being the reason I even know anything at all about the Bible. <laughs> yeah, me too, actually. This is for dragging us to church that first time. This is for freedom to worship and his sacrifice for that. This one's for not letting his best friends stay mad at each other. You know, he loved the simple things. Things like people getting to speak their mind or having dreams and pursuing them. This is for defending those things. You know, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I want to. It's okay, buddy. Just take your time then. This one's not just for my dad but for all the people like him who helped protect their country. I'll skip to that one. Please bow your head for our Memorial Day prayer. Dear God, we thank you for the freedom that you have given to us and for the price that was paid by Christ so that we all could live free from slavery to sin and death. We pray that you would banish violence from our midst and wipe away our tears, that we may all deserve to be called your sons and daughters. Keep in your mercy those men and women who have died in the cause of freedom, and bring them safely into your kingdom of justice and peace. Comfort the families of those who have lost fathers, mothers, daughters, and sons. May we never take our freedom for granted. We ask that you provide your protection over those who are serving in our military. May we honor the lives and experiences of those who have served our country, listening to their stories and helping to carry the weight of what they have seen. We ask that you would draw them to yourself and all of us towards peace, for you are the truth, the, you are the way, you are the light. Amen. This is a humbling time indeed. And you know what? Even though the church building is closed, did you know that mission, ministry, and administration still happen because the church is not a building, but it's a people. And so I just want to personally take a moment to thank you for your support. Because even though we're separated, we continue to minister to one another and to the surrounding community because of your generosity. Now, I also want to let you know that um, there are several special services coming up in the next five weeks. Services for confirmation, for graduates, for new members, for scholarship recipients, and, and Father's Day. You don't want to miss it. So be sure to download the announcements and stay connected and participate in these events.
Also in the announcements and on our website, GUMC.org, uh, you also find ways to connect with one another and to resource our community through the Kumak Food Bank and the Mask Making Ministry. And you know what? We do all these things in response to God's blessings for us. And we do them together because we can accomplish more together than we can accomplish on our own. And since the pandemic struck, the way we support mission and ministry has changed. You know, for some, you faithfully continue to uh, either mail in or drop off a check to the church for your financial support, and that's amazing. For others, especially if you're new to Grace, you may find it more convenient to set up one-time or recurring gifts, either directly from your checking or credit card, you know, the same way you do it for utilities and such. And if this is what you prefer, you can go to our website, gumc.org, and click on the Giving tab, or from your phone, you can simply text GUMC to 77977. But you know what, whatever way you choose to give, on behalf of the people that we serve through Grace Church around our town and around the world, I say thank you. Let us pray as we prepare our hearts to give to God. Gracious and ever-loving God, Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you bestow on us, the blessings that we find even in the midst of this pandemic and separation and isolation. Blessings in our family and our friends and in our church community, which binds us together no matter where we are through your Holy Spirit. And Lord, we thank you for the opportunities to minister to and to serve other people, people who are lost and broken, people who are, or are afraid. And people just find no hope in this day or in the days to come. Lord, you've blessed us in so much that it just overflows out of us so that we can minister to the people who need you the most. And so, Lord, as we give, whether we give by check or mail or, or electronically or text, whatever it is, Lord, we just pray that you would bless the gifts that we offer, Lord, that you would multiply them so that the ministries here at the church could continue and that new people could be reached with the good news of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we thank you and we praise you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. And all God's people say, amen, amen, and thank you. Well, as we get started, please don't forget to download the announcements and bulletin. It has all the information about what's going on at the church and upcoming opportunities. You'll see the link there in your comment section. And remember that online worship is more interactive than sitting in a sanctuary listening to a pastor speak all day. Uh, so feel free to comment or ask questions in the comment section during the message. And whichever platform you're on, someone will be there to answer them for you. Well, you know, for the past few weeks, we've been talking about our current situation during this pandemic, that we're living in a time of fear and worry and anxiety. And, you know, fear takes many shapes and forms. And probably the greatest fear that we face is the fear of death. In fact, our brain is wired to help us avoid doing anything that might cause us to die. And that's why Pastor Scott does not go on roller coasters. In fact, one Sunday morning, the pastor noticed little Alex was staring up at a large plaque that hung in the foyer of the church. And the plaque was covered with names, and then small American flags were mounted on either side of it. Well, the seven-year-old had been staring at the plaque for some time, so the pastor walked up and stood beside him and said quietly, Good morning, Alex. Well, good morning, replied the young man, still focused on the plaque. Finally, he said, Pastor McGee, what is this? Well, son, it's a memorial to all the young men and women who died in the service. Well, soberly, they stood together, staring at the large plaque, until finally little Alex's voice was just barely audible when he asked, well, which service was it, the 9.30 or the 11 o'clock? <laughs> well, listen, I'm glad we switched to 10 o'clock, so now we're all safe, right? Well, you know, as we observe Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who sacrificed their lives in battles to preserve our many freedoms, one of which is to gather to worship God. 
and tomorrow all across the United States, people will commemorate this day and what it symbolizes. And even if we're unable to march in parades together, bands will still play, speeches will be given, prayers will be offered to God, taps will be played, and guns will be fired as a salute to those who died for our freedom. You know, in chapter 15 of the Apostle Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, Paul speaks about death and identifies death as the final enemy that we face. Isn't it? Think about that. Death is our final enemy. However, in regards to our Christian perspective on death, he writes this. He said, listen, I will tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised imperishable and we will all be changed. For this perishable body must put on imperishability and this mortal body must put on immortality. When this perishable body puts on imperishability and this mortal body puts on immortality, then the saying that is written will be, be fulfilled. The saying which reads, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? You know, on this Memorial Day weekend, we remember that as people of faith, that death does not have the final say. And so perhaps that should be part of our commemoration and celebration this weekend. Did you know that our present commemoration of this day came out of the Civil War? In 1865, shortly after the end of the war, a group of women in Mississippi chose May 30th as a day to place flowers upon the graves of their war dead. Now, over the years, this modified and changed, but the practice of choosing a special day to decorate the graves of the war soon spread to both the North and the South, and it came to be known as Decoration Day. Well, of course, now it's called Memorial Day, and it's observed as a day to honor the fallen of all our nation's wars, a time when our country pauses to remember those who made the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms which they enjoy. And you know, many of us uh, have or know of loved ones who have paid the ultimate price for freedom. And we honor them on this day, remembering that a loved one lost to war is not a statistic or, or merely uh, a casualty of war. But that person was one who was filled with hopes and dreams, who loved their family and their friends. And so we owe them a debt that can never be repaid. In fact, as Jesus said in John chapter 15, verse 13, no one has greater love than this than to lay down one's life for their friends. But why would someone lay down their life? In his second letter to the church in Corinth, the Apostle Paul tells us that our lives are a treasure, a gift from God, but that it's fragile, that our bodies are jars of clay. And although we are vessels of God's love and light, our lives can crack and warp and be broken by tragic circumstances, even in the service of others. You know, the the Greek word uh, describing us as, cl as clay jars is ostrakinos, which literally means earthenware. It was a word used to describe plain, ordinary, run-of-the-mill pots. Now, this is not a very complimentary uh, term for people, right? But this is a good analogy of our lives because the Bible says in Genesis 2 that when God made humans, he formed them out of the dirt, out of the clay of the ground. And there are many references in the Bible that speak of our relationship to God in this way. In Isaiah chapter 64, we read, We are the clay and you are the potter. We are the work of your hands. And so our lives are indeed the work of God's hand. But the sad reality is that in our fragile brokenness, human history is a history of turning its back on God and of not loving one another, but instead one of making war with one another. Hence, the need for days such as this. We are born, we make war, and we die. 
And if this were the end of the story, it truly would be sad. Life would be meaningless because it's a losing battle, a no-win situation. However, the good news is that God has a plan, and that plan is for our salvation, that our human frailty and broken lives would not be the end of it. In fact, an interesting thing about Paul's analogy comparing our lives to common clay pots is that in Jesus' day, in order to keep valuables safe, the most important treasures in one's household were normally kept in these, uh, you know, earthenware vessels. And while the clay pots were common and generally unattractive, their exterior belied the importance and beauty of their contents. You know, for our lives themselves are simple, yet we're also complex. Our bodies are susceptible to disease and deterioration, yet our human spirit soars beyond it all. Our natural instinct is for self-preservation, and yet we willingly place these ordinary, fragile vessels in harm's way to fight for freedom, for the greater good of humanity. Because, you see, these ordinary jars of clay become extraordinary instruments of justice and mercy in the hands of our almighty creator, God. And so we come and we share days such as today on this Memorial Day weekend, and we remember those extraordinary persons, those who are the heroes of our freedom, and those who gave their very lives for us. For they have been delivered by the hand of God to that glorious place of peace and light, and have heard the words, well done, good and faithful servant, Come into your rest, for their struggles and their trials have come to an end. But, you know, perhaps many of you here today are facing struggles and, and trials and challenges of your own right now. I mean, things like isolation, financial stress, depression, and fear. But I'm here to tell you, that even in the brokenness of life, that God will be there with you. And by his Holy Spirit, God will guide and comfort you, whether you are observing Memorial Day by roasting hot dogs or by placing flowers on the grave of a fallen comrade or loved one. You see, we can pick up the pieces of our broken lives and press on and persevere because the power of God's Spirit will help us. You know, because here's the thing, as people who enjoy the, the, tr the freedoms in our nation, which were paid for by the blood of our military men and women for the past 244 years, we owe it to them to be the best that we can be, to live out our freedoms faithfully, to serve others, to vote, to work for the common good, even in the midst of a pandemic. And yet, we enjoy the freedom to be able to do these things, but the greatest freedom that we have is the freedom to, that we have in Jesus Christ, who paid the price for our lives so that death would not be the end. Because at 3 o'clock p.m. on a Friday long ago, Jesus, hanging on the cross, said, It is finished. He breathed his last breath, bowed his head and died. And he was dead and buried, and on the morning of the third day, he was raised to life, because death was swallowed up in victory. And it is indeed through the victory which we enjoy through Christ that we look forward to the day when our human labor would be no longer one of fighting to defend freedom, but rather one of reaping the harvest of love when armies would beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, and nation would not make war against nation. For the names of the fallen are many, and there are even many more whose names we don't know. But with God's help, and because of the sacrifice of Jesus, one day, perhaps, there will be no more names to add to the list on Memorial Day.
My fellow Americans, Memorial Day is a day of ceremonies and speeches. Throughout America today, we honor the dead of our wars. We recall their valor and their sacrifices. We remember they gave their lives so that others might live. The unknown soldier who has returned to us today and whom we lay to rest is symbolic of all our missing sons. About him, we may well wonder as others have. Did he marry? Did he have children? Did he look expectantly to return to a bride? We'll never know the answers to these questions about his life. We do know, though, why he died. He saw the horrors of war and bravely faced them. Certain his own cause and his country's cause was a noble one. That he was fighting for human dignity, for free men everywhere. Let us, if we must, debate the lessons learned at some other time. Today, we simply say with pride, thank you, dear son. May God cradle you in his loving arms. As we come to the table for communion today, you know, communion is such a great way for us, even though we're separated, to join together to be united by God's Holy Spirit. And so I encourage you to prepare as we are about to come to the table. Now, first let me say that in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open communion, which means that you don't need to be a member of Grace Church or the United Methodist Church for that matter, because it's Christ's table and not our table. And Christ invites to the table all who love him and who desire to follow him. Uh, to prepare for communion, we encourage you to have some bread or, or, or crackers nearby and then perhaps cups of, of juice that you can have or another beverage that you can either dip your bread into or single, uh, singularly uh, drink as we come together at the table. Uh, but as we prepare our hearts, uh, let me invite Pastor Bridget to lead us in the prayer of confession. As followers of Jesus, we all want to be more like Jesus. We want to be caring and compassionate, and we want to be rooted in our relationship to God as Jesus was. However, in our humanity, we all fall short. And as we come to the table to commune with Christ, we confess our sins and we seek forgiveness. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law, and we have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us take a moment to pray in silence as we confess our sins before God. God's word tells us that if we confess our sins, that God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In the name of God, you are forgiven. Amen. If you're there with someone, turn to them, give them a hug or a smile, and let them know that God's grace is for them too, and that they are forgiven. Thank you, Pastor Bridget. You know, Memorial Day weekend is a time to remember sacrifice. And while we remember the sacrifice made by members of our military for our personal freedom, we also come to the table to remember Christ's sacrifice for our eternal freedom. And so I invite you to join with me in the great thanksgiving as we prepare to commune with Christ. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. 
You know, it is right and a good and it's a joyful thing. Always and everywhere, no matter where we are, separated or together in the sanctuary, but always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and you breathed into us the breath of life. But then when we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You brought, to, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and you set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn as we say together, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Well, holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ, because it's by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection that you gave birth to your church. You delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. You know, on the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he was reclining around the table with his friends. But then he took bread. He gave thanks to you. Then he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so it's in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ that we come and offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith, saying, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Friends, I invite you to hold your hands out in an attitude of receiving as I bless the elements here and in your homes. Holy Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered in our homes or wherever we may be, and also on these gifts of bread and the fruit of the vine, which we prepared. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood, and by your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Friends, I invite you at this time to take your bread or cracker, as this is the body of Christ broken for you. And you may also take the cup, for this is the blood of Christ, the cup of our salvation, which is poured out for you. Now, if you have individual cups, I invite you to eat the bread, or if you're using a common cup, to dip your bread into the cup and to share with one another. Let us take a moment as we do so to reflect on Christ's sacrifice and on how we remain the body of Christ, even though we are separated by distance. Mm. Let us join together at this time in the prayer which Jesus taught us as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. But friends, it is by the amazing grace of God and by the sacrifice of those who have gone before us that the chains of bondage have been broken. And so as we conclude our time together today, I invite you to sing together, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. Bye. 
My chains are gone. I've been set free. What an amazing thing. And sometimes we think the chains of the bonds of this life are, are what holds us together, but also holds us from being all that we can be. But to know that even in these fragile clay jars that, that we live in, that God has prepared a place for us to spend all eternity with him and with all those who have laid down their lives for our freedoms. Well, listen, as we uh, wrap up today, I just want to remind you a couple of things. One is that there'll be Zoom Coffee Fellowship right after this. The link should be right there in your comment section. Also, Sunday School starts at 11. Go to gumc.org and go to the Sunday School page. Uh, all that information is there, as well as uh, small groups and other opportunities to serve. If you're new, please, please fill out a Digital Connect card, and you can find that uh, either in the message, in the uh, comment section, or on our website, gumc.org. And now, as we prepare to go out into the world, and listen, this Memorial Day weekend, there's so much to do and so many thoughts going through our minds. But we go knowing that our time on earth is but a short time, but eternity lasts forever and ever. And so we go with the blessings then this weekend and always, the blessings of God the Father, of God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. My friends, have an amazing weekend. Don't eat too many hot dogs, and uh, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Hey, what are you doing here? You're supposed to be at church. Come on, you can barbecue later on. I got to get this thing ready for tomorrow. Go, go, time for church, go. Welcome to Grace Church.